Since his early days, he has been one of the most popular PGA Tour pros. With his flamboyant style and incredible talent, Ricky's journey is nothing short of spectacular. He beat most pros while he was still playing college golf, but is also known as Mr. Runner-Up because he could never win a tournament. What makes his story so intriguing? Is it his relentless pursuit of that mythical major title that keeps us all on the edge of our seats? Or the fact that he often plays golf with Michael Jordan? Let's start from the beginning. Ricky Utaka Fowler was born in Murrieta, California on December 13, 1988. His parents, Lynn and Rod Fowler, named him after his Japanese grandfather, Yukata. While Ricky was just three years old, his grandfather gave him a golf club and took him to a driving range in California. Without any type of golf lessons, he spent the first years of his life practicing only on the driving range. This completely self-taught method later proved to be of major value to his golf career. Ricky was insanely good for his age and already broke 70 as a 12-year-old, but golf wasn't the first sport he fell in love with. His father passed on the sport of motocross to him and put him on dirt bikes at a young age. Fowler Sr. was a professional, and he won the Baja 1000 dirt bike race in 1986 while he was racing for the Yamaha team. Even though Rod would have been thrilled if his kid had followed in his footsteps, he also became aware of the fact that his son possessed a natural talent for golf. So he kept taking him to the local driving range, where he used to deliver sand with his own truck company. Tragically, Fowler's hopes of becoming a professional motocross rider collapsed when he was involved in an accident prior to his freshman year of high school, resulting in two fractured bones in his foot. He started playing golf competitively in high school, building his talents and dedication. Ricky Fowler's early career was marked by incredible achievements. As a young golfer, he made a name for himself when he was just 18 years old. In 2007, he led his team to the state final after winning the SW League final with impressive rounds of 64 and 69. After high school, Ricky went to Oklahoma State University, which is why he always wears orange on Sundays to this day. Playing collegiate golf in Oklahoma led him to be recognized by being named to the NCAA All-American First Team. Fowler's success extended to international amateur events as he qualified for the U.S. Open. He was one of three amateurs who made the cut and proceeded to the weekend. Eventually, he tied for 60th in the tournament, putting himself on the radar of the great golf pros. In 2009, he gave up his college eligibility and went full-time pro after spending 36 weeks as the number one ranked amateur golfer in the world. Since turning pro, Ricky Fowler embarked on a remarkable journey on the nationwide tour, quickly drawing attention with his skill and talent. His performances on the tour earned him a sponsorship from Titleist, and he soon made his way to the PGA Tour. Ricky's unique dress code, along with his exceptional golf skills, made him a standout. In his first two PGA tournaments, he achieved impressive finishes, placing seventh and third. After a three-way playoff, Fowler scored 18 under par, including a hole-in-one in his final round. This guaranteed him his card for the 2010 season through qualifying school. Ricky's fearless approach led to an outstanding rookie season, marked by numerous top 10 and top 25 finishes. His performances in the Waste Management Phoenix Open and the Memorial in Dublin, Ohio, were particularly noteworthy, placing him second in both. You'd think that after two runner-up results in his first season, a win would be in his sights, but back then, no one realized what bad fortune was in store for Ricky. Ricky's debut season caught the attention of Puma, which led to a sponsorship deal and pushed him into the top 50 in the official World Golf Rankings. His exceptional skills earned him a spot on the U.S. Ryder Cup team, making the 21-year-old the youngest U.S. Ryder Cup player at the time. He ended the year triumphantly by winning the Rookie of the Year Award, a decision that caused controversy as he defeated Ireland's Rory McIlroy. However, the following year, Ricky couldn't replicate his spectacular first-year success. Despite a fifth-place finish at the Open at St. George's and several top 10 and top 25 finishes, he didn't win a tournament, though he rose to 32nd in the world rankings. It's quite striking that someone with such great performances in his first years as a pro still hasn't won anything. There seems to be a curse on Ricky. People are starting to talk, and the pressure is only getting worse. It's like he's always the bridesmaid and never the bride. It wasn't until May 2012 at the Wells Fargo Championship in Charlotte 
that Fowler secured his first PGA Tour victory. In a thrilling sudden death playoff against Rory McIlroy and DA points, Ricky made a remarkable birdie putt to finally win his first trophy. There's a lot of people that have doubted or said, you'll never win, so it's nice to kind of shut them up a little bit, Fowler said after the event. Unfortunately, he continued to be a frequent runner-up finisher. He had a chance to force another playoff at the Players' Championship, but he missed his putt and finished second behind Matt Kuchar. This was his fifth second place finish in his short career. In 2014, after a tie for fifth at the Masters, Ricky Fowler achieved his best finish to date at the US Open in Pinehurst, North Carolina, where he was runner up alongside Eric Compton, finishing one under par. Both golfers were eight strokes behind the winner, Martin Kamer. Fowler's impressive performance continued at the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool, where he started six strokes behind in the final round and finished tied for second with Sergio Garcia, just two shots behind Rory McIlroy. At the PGA Championship that year, in a rain-soaked showdown at Valhalla, Fowler, Phil Mickelson, and McIlroy vied for the lead. Fowler led for most of the day, but ultimately placed third. Remarkably, he became only the third player after Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods to finish in the top five in all four majors in a single calendar year, but he was the first among them not to win any. Finishing the year with 10 top 10 finishes, Fowler climbed to 10th in the world rankings. Despite his achievements, there was a sense that Fowler had untapped potential. In 2015, he began the year with a respectable 12th place at the Masters, followed by a playoff showdown later that year. In an incredible game, he played the last six holes six under par, including an eagle at the 16th. In the playoff, involving Sergio Garcia and Kevin Kisner, Fowler triumphed with a spectacular putt after Kisner missed his chance. This victory marked a turning point for Fowler, who also won the Scottish Open in July and the Deutsche Bank Championship in September, edging out Henrik Stenson by one stroke. 2015 was Fowler's most lucrative year, with seven top 10 performances and three victories earning him a total of $5.7 million. But since getting married, Ricky Fowler's personal life has seen several significant changes. He signed a multi-year contract with TaylorMade, using their balls and gloves. Additionally, his long-term coach, Butch Harmon, retired. Public attention was drawn to Harmon's comments about Fowler's focus on the sport. In an interview with Sky Sports, Harmon mentioned a serious conversation with Fowler in which he questioned his dedication. He bluntly asked Fowler to choose between being a celebrity or a professional golfer, implying that Fowler's focus was wavering. This revelation led to the perception that Fowler may not be as committed to golf as previously thought. Six-time major champion Nick Faldo also chimed in with criticisms, particularly on social media. In response to Fowler's absence from the Masters, Faldo humorously suggested that Fowler could use the time to film more commercials, hinting at a lack of focus on the game. He raised questions about Fowler's motivations, wondering whether Fowler was more interested in money than the sport itself. Fowler's multiple endorsements became a talking point. He has deals with Cobra, Puma, Farmers Insurance, Grant Thornton, TaylorMade, Rocket Mortgage, and Mercedes, and spends a lot of time on engagements with corporate clients. This heavy involvement in endorsements led to jokes on the tour about Fowler having more sponsorships than wins. After all those years of decent tournaments and lots of talk in the media, Ricky emerged in June 2023 and finally put an end to all the criticisms and, more importantly, his four-year winless streak. Fowler began the final round at the Rocket Mortgage Classic with promise, notching three birdies in the first seven holes. However, he soon fell into a monotonous rhythm of ten consecutive pars from the eighth to the seventeenth hole. Death by a thousand pars almost happened again for Ricky. It led to a dwindling of his lead as the day progressed, especially with Colin Morikawa making a strong push in the background, nearly reaching 25 under. Fowler's brilliant approach shot on the 72nd hole set him up for a birdie, tying him with Morikawa and Hadwin. Despite an initial errant tee shot in the playoff, Fowler's recovery was outstanding. His approach shot landed 12 feet from the hole while Morikawa and Hadwin faced their own challenges. Morikawa missed a crucial approach, and Hadwin failed to sink a 22-foot putt. This opened the way for Fowler to seize the win, just as thunderstorms approached. Reflecting on his performance, Fowler believed that his consistent play throughout the season, highlighted by eight top 10 finishes, was building towards this victory. 
It marked Fowler's sixth PGA Tour victory and his first win in 1610 days since the 2019 Waste Management Phoenix Open. Looking back on his golf career, we just expected more from someone with his abilities. To have six wins on the PGA Tour is almost embarrassing, and the fact that he did not win at least one of the majors is absolutely painful. Fowler's journey hasn't been a smooth one. From close calls in major championships to winless streaks, the media's relentless scrutiny has complicated his journey. Fortunately, he continues to stand out by bringing a sense of style and composure to the game of golf. At the very least, he can get back to his singing career with the golf boys when he gets tired of golfing.